All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take an in-depth look at the squat. And I know, you know, this is, it's a fundamental exercise, but believe me, there are so many issues going on with doing the squat. And you know, for the most part, the squat gets a very bad reputation as a low back destroyer, a knee destroyer, you know, there's all this nasty reputation around the squat. And the thing that I've seen, and I've seen this with over 12 years now in not only doing this exercise, but assessing it with patients in physical rehabilitation, with athletes, even high level athletes, and even, you know, the average Joe or average Jane, everybody in between. And the main problem that I've seen when somebody does a squat and they've complained of some type of, of pain or orthopedic issues going on, I have yet to see a case where somebody could not squat pain-free if they uh, perform the movement with the right muscles working in the right sequence. Okay, so all of the, the pains and the dysfunctions and problems that I've ever seen with a squat have been due to inefficient mechanics, improperly performing the exercise, using compensation strategies, using the wrong muscle sequences or just the wrong muscles altogether. So those are the problems that I've seen. So I want to take this time to show you what to look for and how to perform the squat properly to make sure that you've got the, the best chance to help your clients or yourself overcome any kind of pain or dysfunctions or, or any kind of problems that they might have. Now, why is the squat important? Well, you know, there are some schools of thought out there that you don't need to do squats. Squats are um, not needed, they're not functional, whatever, you know, the case may be. So the thing that I want to emphasize here is that the squat is so important if you exist in this world that we live in, which obviously if you're watching this video, you do. Because there's so many activities we do that you have to be able to squat to survive in this world we live in. You have to bend down to pick things up around the house. Maybe you do some kind of yard work that requires bending and standing. You sit down in a chair and you stand up. You get in and out of your car, right? There's so many variations of squatting that we do in our everyday environment. So to say that a squat is not needed or it's not functional is completely off base of a squat. How would you go to the toilet if you couldn't squat? All right, so a squat, you have to be able to squat at some level to exist in this world. So uh, that's why the squat's important. You have to be able to do it. And it's definitely a component of, if you're training athletes or you're involved in uh, competitive or even recreational sports, obviously there is a degree of squatting with running and jumping and, and moving around. So we've got to be able to do a squat. So I'm going to point out some key things um, in what to look for. So first, um, let's take a look. I'm going to talk to you close up. So when I get into actually uh, showing the squat, because I want to show my whole body here, I'm going to back up. So I'll look a little bit farther away, but you'll be able to hear and see everything. Okay. Um, so I apologize, I don't have the high def camera yet, I'm working on it. So we're going to look at, when we're assessing a squat, we're looking at two, uh, two views, two, two viewpoints that we want to look at. So if I'm your client, the two, two ways that you want to view me doing a squat when you're assessing me is from the front and from the side. And you can also, when I say front, I'm, I'm also talking about the back. So it's front and back, right, view this way or that way. Okay, and uh, also then from the side, right? Either side, whichever, whichever way you prefer. So the difference is you want, it, you want to have both of these views, either front or back or, or both. If you know, you might want to walk around your client as you do it. That's typically what I would do when I was training clients. I'd just, you know, walk. If I'm assessing anybody, I, I walk around them and get the complete view. Um, but a front and back assessment, what it's going to show you is it's going to show you basically how stable somebody is when they perform a squat. So what we're looking at is two different things. We're looking at stability, and then we're looking at what we see in the side view, and you'll see it when I go through it, is, is mobility. So two things we're looking at, stability and mobility. 
All right, so the front and back view will show you how stable somebody is. The side view will typically show you how, how mobile somebody is. So when we're looking from the front, if I go through a squat, typically it's an overhead squat assessment. Um, you know, you use a, uh, a lightweight dowel rod you can use or just have the, the person hold their arms overhead. But when you're doing that, hopefully I'm in the camera here. So you can see how stable I am. When I'm talking about stability, what I mean is from top to bottom. So if you look at my, my head, my neck, my, my shoulders from here, you can see any kind of deviations. You know, if my, if my shoulders are moving, um, if, my, if my trunk is leaning a little bit, or if my head's off, you can see that. That that's, refers to a degree of stability. Also, you can see it within the hips, so you've got the, the shoulders, head, neck, you've got you know, the trunk, you've got the hips, you can see if the hips deviate to one side or the other. You can see the knees and the feet, right? Do the knees collapse? Do they excessively pull away? Is, is one knee collapsing and the other one's not? And also you can see what the feet and the ankles are doing. So it really gives you a good view in terms of how stable the movement is for somebody. Now if you're looking from the side, we can see, we can get an idea of the mobility, right? Because what we're looking at from a mobility standpoint, and, and if you have um, subscribed on my newsletter and gotten the, the seven advanced kinetic chain assessments that I go through, I go through the squat assessment, so you, you've probably seen this before, but looking at mobility for doing an overhead squat assessment, you can see how mobile the, the person is that you're, that you're assessing. You can see where their head and neck is, right? Is it straight? Is it here? What does it look like? You can see where the arc position is. It'll tell you a lot about their shoulder mobility with where, where the, the arms are overhead. So if you've got the, the arms straight overhead, right, you're, you're looking at a pretty healthy degree of mobility. But if you've got somebody who can only hold their arms maybe to here, that says a lot about how mobile their shoulders are, right, or how immobile their shoulders are. Or if you've got somebody who can hold it way back here, right? They might have a degree of, of hypermobility at the shoulder and, and some instability in there as well. So it, it shows you the mobility up there. It also shows you the mobility of the hip. So we got the shoulders, we got the hip, right? Because we can see how not only how the depth of the squat, but what it looks like. Look at my trunk. When I squat, I have my trunk with a slight forward lean, but pretty much um, erect. Now what you'll see a lot of times are people who, who will squat like this, right? The, the hips really aren't moving a lot and they're more just bending at the waist. And these are the people who all the time complain that squats hurt their lower back. Because all they're doing is, is it's like a hip hinge, right? They're bending at the waist and they, they're failing to use the hips and they're really over activating the lumbar extensors. So they're overusing the low back muscles basically, okay? So you can see that. You can also see the mobility at, at, the, at the knees and the ankle joints, right? You can see if they're bending, you can see how they're moving, you know, what kind of flexibility they have. You can take a look at the foot position or the heels lifting off the ground when they, when they squat down. That'll tell you a lot about the mobility of the ankle, right? Or the knees, are the, are the knee joint bending. A lot of times with those, those squatters who do the hip hinge type stuff, you won't see the knees bend a whole lot, all right? So it tells you a lot with these views, um, it, with, with what's going on in the squat, and you can also, just from looking at that, you can start to pick apart where the muscle imbalances tend to exist and what type of, even without asking somebody what kind of pain that they might be dealing with, you can really start to get a real clear picture of the issues they might be dealing with. So you see somebody like that who has that, who has that forward trunk squat, right? They're not bending the knees, you start to ask them, uh, yeah, do you, you know, do you have any incidences of low back pain, any kind of history of, of lower back problems? And, you know, the nine times out of ten are going to tell you, hey, well, yeah, you know, I, I do have some low back issues. Uh, or, you know, they might frequently feel tight or whatever the case might be. They might have a previous injury. Who knows what's going on? So it tells you a lot, okay? So that is the, just an overall picture of where you're going to be looking when you're assessing somebody on a squat. And the same goes true for any kind of squat, even if it's a back squat, barbell on the back, right? You're looking at the same, the same thing, right? Where, where the bar is, that'll tell you a lot about the shoulders, right? Where the elbows are, because if they round out like that, 
uh, you know, where, where their head position is, where the shoulder position is, it's going to tell you a lot. If they, can, if they can pull the shoulder blades together, stand up and, and squeeze the, those shoulder blades back and pull those shoulders back, keep their head up, that's going to tell you a lot. Um, front squatting as well, right? You know, looking at, looking at all of those issues that I just talked about. Where are the shoulders at? Where is the head at? Where is the upper back at? Things like that. So you use these views and you can assess um, any type of squat, okay? So the next videos, there, there's going to be more videos in this, in this whole squat assessment that I'm talking about. In the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, foot position. Now there's this big debate with, you know, where we stand. Are the toes pointed in or should they be pointed out? Or, you know, what's, what's the best bet? What, what's the pros and cons with everything? So I'm going I'm to go into this because this is a very important and critical piece that you need to be able to identify and address when assessing the squat. Okay, so I'll be back with that video in just a bit.